Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby man. Just caught a touchdown. Coming up on the News 24 Late Report. We are all getting ready for 1990 this weekend. From here in middle Georgia to the Big Apple and around the world, we end the decade of the 80s. The Macon police say Jerry Anderson is a major middle Georgia drug dealer. And the Macon police have you in bars. I grew up in Tilden Height Project. It was hard. It was eight of us. My mama made nine. And the king of cocaine, as he was known, had no intention of stepping down from his throne. Back then, I brick by brick. It was a home for me and my children. One blow at a time. <laughs> the Tittle Heights apartments are being torn down to create this. A $45 million, 270 unit space available for families. It is a Good evening. And Happy New Year. Local drug kingpin Jerry Anderson is behind bars tonight. Law authorities arrested him along with Alan Green. The two are being charged with possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. As 24th Street, the Morgan reports tonight on his arrest, police say is putting a major dent in drug operations here in Macon. The members of the Macon Police Department. Police Chief Jim Brooks says Jerry Anderson is the head of one of the biggest, if not the biggest, drug operations here in Macon. He says his arrest is a major success in halting the sale of crack cocaine. I think it's going to do uh, a substantial amount to see uh, to see Mr. Anderson walking around uh, handcuffed. I think that his presence uh, is felt continually throughout all areas of our city and our county. Jerry Anderson has been quite successful in eluding the law in the past. Chief Brooks says it was only with some very good information that authorities were able to make the arrest and a raid on a Kent Drive address uncovered as yet an undetermined amount of cocaine. Members of the Macon Police Department in conjunction with the FBI, the IRS, ATF, and the Bibb County Sheriff's Office uh, took Mr. Anderson down and found in his possession a quantity of cocaine. At this time, that amount of cocaine is unknown because it has not been processed through the uh, crime lab. Jerry Anderson and Alan Green are both being charged with possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. Chief Brooks says the investigation is continuing to make sure enough evidence and charges are brought against them to keep them behind bars for a very long time. Teresa Morgan, News 24. No job, no nothing. My mama crying to me every time she see me. So I had to do what I had to do. I had to take the drugs and start selling them so I could help my mom and my kids out. He goes from here to here to here and his motions are all over the place at certain points and it affected him, you know, tremendously. So some of the things he talked about still affects him to this day. I started making a million, a million two hundred fifty thousand a week. I don't like the glorify, but it was great. I just had money, I had jewelry, I dominated the clubs, I dominated women, whatever. But once they got me, I never turned ground again for 28 years. I grew up in Tilden Heights, right up the road. And it was hard. My mama worked at the hospital, and it was every two weeks she got paid. And it might be that week where we might didn't have nothing on the table. So I went to college in Tennessee. Until my girlfriend got pregnant, had to leave from college and come back home. Everything I could to try to get a job. No job. So that's when later on, this girl introduced me to what I started doing. The cocaine. I knew it was wrong, but I didn't care. I had to do what I had to do. My family needed help. And I knew I was going to go to jail one day for doing it. After spending nearly three decades in prison, Jerry Anderson, the man once known as the king of cocaine and bacon, is back on the streets. I thought I was going to get out of the other, which I didn't think I was going to go to jail. I was real arrogant back then. So some come called the loud speaker said, Jerry Anderson, come to the lieutenant office right now. She said, oh, you been granted clemency. I said, Ooh, 
Oh, I'm about to cry I'm having a fit. When they came to me about the story and was like, hey, we're looking for someone to make it into a stage play. And I was like, why not? Why we're moving stuff? So that's the we out. met at um, a local business office and he laid on the floor and went through his whole story. He was like, I can tell the story better if I laid out. It, it's almost like he took me there. We just working on the play, making sure the messages in the play come out. We want them to really see that regardless of what you go through in life. If you're given that other chance, what are you going to do with that second chance? Don't go through this route thinking you can get away with it. I'm hoping that all the young kids and all the people that, that is on the wrong track to see the play, there's going to be something in these parts that's going to resemble somebody going to hit them in some kind of way. And the fall part is always what happens to you when you get caught. I want them to see the redemption for it, but when you get out, come back positive. Do something real good for the community. And that's my job, do something good for the community. I got to do something good. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Georgia with it. Making the heart of Georgia. Now, everybody in the Mac town, y'all get in the comment box, man. It's our first time around here, so... Y'all make sure y'all point us in the right direction. We trying to get right. Now, before we get into who we going to be covering today, we going to talk a little bit about Macon or the Mac town. Now, Macon slash Bibb County, the metro area in Georgia is one of only 22 counties nationwide with a violent crime rate exceeding 700 incidents per 100,000 people. So, for instance, there were 1,624 violent crimes reported in the area in 2020. Now that's 708 for every 100,000 people. So I'm gonna put that into perspective for some people. In 2020, um, Macon was the 22nd most dangerous city that you can go to. So even with cities like Milwaukee, Wisconsin, having 206 homicides and even a city like Houston, Texas, that has 662 homicides with the amount of people in the city per the violent crimes that are happening making rank ahead of those cities now during the course of doing my research for this episode i read a lot of places where they were saying making is a more dangerous city than atlanta and based on these stats that seems to be the case based on the population of Macon, Georgia. You're more likely to be a victim of a violent crime in that city based on how small it is. Now, the guy that we're going to be covering today is going to be none other than Jerry Anderson, Mr. Tyndall Heights, the king of cocaine, a person who then Sheriff Ray Wilkes would credit as one of the persons to introduce crack cocaine to the area wilkes would go on to be quoted saying that he didn't sell dope but he had a hundred kids selling it for him now during the year of 1989 alone law enforcement officials would go on to search mr anderson's car more than 60 times then police chief jim brooks would testify that he had personally stopped mr anderson on several occasions no drugs were found on any of those 60 searches. Now, it would be that same year, right before the turn of the decade, on December the 29th, that authorities would finally nab their prey when they would go on to stop a Nissan 280Z. They had been directed to seize, although the car apparently did not belong to Mr. Anderson himself. He was driving the vehicle. Now, when the car was pulled over, the passenger in the vehicle, a guy by the name of Alfonso Green, jumped out and ran. The officers would go on to chase him. They said they found an ounce or more of cocaine along Mr. Green's path. Both men would go on to be charged with trafficking in cocaine. Now, one anonymous law enforcement official would go on to say they were lucky as hell to get Jerry. Going on to say that it was just a big lucky break. Now... Jerry Anderson would go on to be indicted on January 9th of 1990 in Bibb Superior Court. Now, before he could post his $100,000 bond, in which his attorney said was one of the highest in that court ever, he was indicted on similar charges in federal court. 
Now, his attorney, State Representative Floyd M. Buford Jr., would go on to say that Jerry Anderson had under the Constitution as many rights as the President of the United States. And he would say over the past two years, those rights have been violated on numerous occasions. Also stating that officers never gave a reason for stopping or searching Mr. Anderson's car. Now, officers wouldn't find anything either on April 28th of 1989 when they seized and searched Mr. Anderson's home. Now, agents with the FBI and IRS also seized several cars, a $4,000 projection screen television. Now, this is 1989. Y'all remember that shit. <laughs> $16,000 worth of jewelry and $113,000 in three bank accounts. Now, although investigators did not have enough to win a drug indictment against Mr. Anderson then, they did have enough to get a seizure warrant for the assets that they claim that he bought with drug profits. Now, in the affidavit that was filed, the FBI would say that they got wind of Mr. Anderson's alleged cocaine dealing from three informants that they had. Now, they also noted that Mr. Anderson had considerable assets for a man who had no visible means of support other than his wife's business, which was a hair boutique called Baddest Beauty Salon in the city of Macon, Georgia at the time. Now, much of what was seized during those raids did not officially belong to Mr. Anderson. The house that was seized was not in his name, but in the name of his wife's uncle, a guy by the name of Willie King. Now, Mr. King would tell investigators that he made the down payment on the house with $36,000 that he borrowed from Jesse Anderson himself, who gave him the cash and a tennis shoebox. Now, he would also say that Mr. Anderson was paying the mortgage on the house. Now, evidence presented at Jerry Anderson's federal trial in 1990 showed that he led a 30-member drug dealing organization that sold an average of $30,000 worth of cocaine a night, but totals could climb up as high as $85,000 per night. Now, dubbed the king of cocaine by a federal prosecutor, Anderson was sentenced in 1991 to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The first person to receive such a sentence in the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Georgia at the time. Now, after serving 20 years for a nonviolent drug offense, he would go on to be pardoned by Barack Obama just days before he was set to leave the White House. Now, Mariam Duke, the federal prosecutor who helped send Anderson to prison for life, said that she was very surprised and dismayed when she heard about Anderson's commution. She would go on to say that the news brought her shock and anger, leading her to say that he was convicted as a kingpin in a continuing criminal enterprise in Macon, telling the Telegraph that he was the first one that we can tell who introduced crack into the Macon area. Now, we rarely get to tell stories like this. He would go on to come home and fund a play based on his life and continue to do positive things in the community. Now, anybody from Macon that was around during this time, y'all make sure y'all get in the comment box. Y'all make sure y'all hit the bell right under this video. Y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all let me know where we need to go, who we need to cover. Direct message me, email me, CC me, tag me. Y'all get with me. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Popalot. Mob, mob, mob.